Welcome to the second in our series of virtual concerts. We're calling this one The Swingin' Strings. My name is Mitch Glickman, music director of the Symphonic Jazz Orchestra. Now, normally, when you go to see a Symphonic Jazz Orchestra concert, you go to a big, beautiful concert hall, like the Carpenter Performing Arts Center in Long Beach. And on that stage, you will see 68 incredible musicians who can play jazz and classical and a whole lot of other styles. They also play music for movies and recordings like Star Wars and The Lion King. But today we're gonna be safe and we're just gonna use a little bit of the members from the orchestra. They actually represent one of the families of the group. You probably figure that out, the string family, right? And when you see a group like this, string quartet, you might think they'd play music that sounds a little bit like this. <laughs> a song by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart called Eine kleine Nachtmusik, A Little Night Music. It was written in the late 1700s, way far away in a place called Europe. But can string instruments that are developed over 400 years ago play music other than classical music? Can they play American music like the blues? Let's find out. Here's a little song we did called Old Time Blues. Thank you. 
So it's not the instruments that determine the styles, it's the musicians. And when you have amazing musicians like this, they can do a lot of things. So let's learn a little bit more about the musicians we have today and their instruments. Here's our first violinist, Paul Cartwright. Hi, my name is Paul Cartwright. I play the violin. Uh, I got started playing music pretty early because my uh, dad was a guitar player and my folks uh, owned a music store where I grew up in Bakersfield. And I was always surrounded by all kinds of instruments. Um, there's a drum set right here. <laughs> and uh, that was actually the first instrument that I took lessons on. I started playing drums when I was about four. And I got fascinated uh, by the violin a bit, a bit later on. Um, I was about six or seven when I started taking lessons on the violin. And it was because I saw a poster in my parents' music store of uh, Mel Bay, of Mel Bay Method Books, uh, playing a violin. And uh, he was a real jolly looking guy. And it said, uh, it's fun to fiddle. <laughs> so. I, uh, I took him at his word, and it turns out it is pretty fun. Um, and uh, I grew up uh, taking lessons, playing classical music, and then when I was about 10, my parents took me to see Stefan Grappelli, the great jazz violinist. Uh, and I was just, my mind was kind of blown <laughs> by what he was able to do on the violin. I, I, uh, and one of my mom's favorite songs that she always asked me to play is, uh, As Time Goes By, and I remember hearing that sound. You know, and just thinking that it, it was just so beautiful and uh, something I had to learn how to do. So I, uh, I started getting into playing jazz uh, and learned a ton from my dad um, and uh, carried that sort of throughout college. And um, when I started working here in LA, uh, I got uh, involved in a lot of other different kinds of recording projects, playing in other styles, um, and that sort of foundation of taking classical lessons and then also having some jazz improvisation uh, early on was really helpful in, in picking up those other styles. Um, I worked a lot on a TV show called Outlander with a great composer called Bear McCreary, and uh, we adapted a, a uh, traditional Irish tune called Sky Boat Song for the theme of that show. got me into lots of different uh, styles of music, and I, I've been able to, to uh, explore um, all kinds of interesting, uh, you know, details of the inflections of the different kinds of, like, Celtic and Scottish music over the years, uh, and uh, other music from all over the world. I find it so interesting finding the ways that different styles kind of connect and kind of communicate and inform one another. Um, so, yeah, that's my uh, story. <laughs> Thank you so much. So we all know that string players can play classical music from Europe, and they can play some American blues, but can they play more modern music, like rhythm and blues, or R&B? Let's check it out. Here's a song called Groovin' on a Friday. <laughs> Thank you. 
let's meet another member of this amazing ensemble. Here's the viola player, Rita Andrade. Hey everyone, my name is Rita Andrade and I'm originally from Austin, Texas. And I was drawn to the viola at the age of nine, but previously I had been playing the piano for about four to five years. And I just was always drawn to the viola. I started on the viola and it was just kind of the odd duckling of the string group, um, the mysterious one. And I love playing it so much because it offers such depth and richness in between a lot of the other voices most of the time. Um, and I grew up playing classically, but also it just became my family and uh, my friends every weekend getting together to play music together. And I played with a string quartet at the age of 11 and we played classical stuff as well as stuff by local composers who often tried to do a lot of rock and roll in the string quartet. And from there I went to Idlewild Arts Academy and that's where I fell in love with California. And I have always done a lot of different kinds of styles. And it was in college where I played with a chamber pop band called Mother Falcon. And then in grad school where I met my current quartet, Atlas Music. And we play all different styles of music from all over the world, from Brazil to Spain to some Celtic music. And we love, love doing all kinds of stuff. So yeah, a little bit of the classical stuff that I love from the viola and the deepness of it. But it was in high school that I, I started listening to a bunch of different kinds of music and alternative music and Radiohead, and I found a composer named Jan Tiersen, and he changed my life, and one of the things I love to play um, is one of his compositions for solo viola. <laughs> sounds like on a viola. Well, a mixture of things. I love playing the viola, and thank you all. So we have to talk about a very important word in jazz. It's called improvisation, or improv for short. And in jazz, improvisation is super important because the musicians make up the notes. So we're about to see this incredible quartet make up a very new song right before your eyes. Here they go. We can start maybe in a, like this, this kind of like a, a pulsing nebula. Okay. Yeah, all right. Like, just like this, it's like a young star that's kind of like gravitational field is like. Atmospheric and. Yeah, it's like start, it's starting to like, like pulse together, you know, before it becomes a mature, star that that's full of radiation but it like, starts out in this kind of like gentle sweet spot with lots of potential <laughs> i love it <laughs> so it's a good image it's good image yeah. to Thank you. 
So it takes a very special ensemble to do a song like that when they're just making things up. They're improvising right on the spot. So let's meet some more of the members of this quartet. We're going to hear the cello player, Peter Jacobson, followed by the second violinist, Leah Zeger. Hi, my name's Peter Jacobson, and I started playing cello uh, at about nine or ten years old. And uh, my parents played music a little bit, my brothers all played and uh, we played in school and when I got older I just never stopped and one of the things I realized is that music is just all about people and it's so fun to be able to feel free to collaborate with whoever you want to play with and uh, really I grew up on the cello learning a lot of classic classical music you might recognize this piece of classical music <laughs> And uh, there was a point where I heard, I started hearing people playing jazz and other kinds of freely creative music, and I thought, like, wow, that's so cool because they can just play and play and play freely, and uh, I want to be able to do that. I was so. Um, you know, it, I really admired everybody who could play freely. Uh, I, I started listening to some music from all around the world, too, and uh, I heard a violinist named uh, Dr. El Subramaniam, and I thought, man, I, that, what a gorgeous approach to music. Uh, so I, I've been studying some raga music from India also, and some of it sounds like, uh, here's, a, here's a, an afternoon raga. I moved to LA at a certain point. I grew up near San Diego, and there were so many people who just played all different kinds of music. And uh, I wanted to just see who I could hang out with with uh, with playing music. Um, here's a here's a tune by Jimi Hendrix called "Little Wing." <laughs>
And um, music is all around you. You can do it a million different ways. And no matter how good you think you are, you have a unique, a unique voice. So use that. Hi, my name is Leah Zeger, and I am from Houston, Texas. I am from a family of string players, and um, I was claimed, trained classically, and I play lots of styles now. But I started out in the Austin Symphony. Uh, I went to a performing arts high school in Houston, and um, I, I started singing as well. I got an injury, actually. I couldn't play because I practiced too hard and was too tense, so I couldn't play for four years, from 15 to 19, and I started singing and got my degree in opera. And, uh, and then I started singing jazz, um, but all the while still playing some violin. And um, then I came out to LA 11 years ago, and I've been touring with Hans Zimmer, who is a composer of lots of movies. And um, I've played in the Hollywood Bowl Orchestra, and I've played with lots of fun groups here in LA. And uh, I'll do a little, maybe I'll play a little jazz for you, because I sing and play a lot of jazz. Or, well, jazz and blues. And then I've got classical chops, too, as so. a... So I could sing a little something as well. I like to do something where I harmonize with myself. On the violin, I play in triads. So I, I have three albums out, and one of the songs on one of those albums is called Dreams. Let's see. In my dreams, I feel it coming. I have everything, and I have Take it away, he'll spin your gold that disappears by day. That's a little bit. And then I sing opera, still a little bit, um, when I get a chance. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. We're going to finish our program with one last song that covers a lot of different styles rock and jazz and classical. Here is In Motion. Thank you. 
So remember, just like these string instruments that are rooted in this long and rich tradition, they can still do anything modern. And you can do anything you want. It doesn't matter your tradition. You are free to do anything you want. Remember that. So thank you for watching our virtual presentation today called Swing and Strings. And now you know it's not the instrument that sets the styles, it's these amazing musicians that can truly do anything. We hope to see you really soon at the Carpenter Performing Arts Center in Long Beach for our next Symphonic Jazz Orchestra concert. Until then, take care.